Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Stanley number FBB179, 3.5 by 3.5, 26D finish. This is a full mortise hinge and a standard weight uh, ball bearing, and much of um, what I just said is buried, of course, down in the part number. And let's go over this hinge. I'm a, I'm a, I really like Stanley hinges. Um, I like them for, first and foremost, I like them because I like the fit and finish. It looks like the manufacturing process of hinges. This manufacturer has a exceptional firm control over understanding of. And the reason I say that is because the hinges for the most part, always look very good, okay? A little bit of a deviation on this particular hinge. In the crotch of the hinge here, I'm not a fan of that run out, or the, or well, it's probably not run out, but um, the fact that the crotch of that hinge is less perfect than I would like to see it, okay? Finish down on this portion, but not running up. That's, that's very atypical. Um, what is incredibly typical is how free of a swinging hinge leaf that is. Just works really nice. Um, that uh, little bit left to be desired on the finishing here and in here, but nonetheless, it's a very attractive hinge. You know, at four, three feet away, you're, you're certainly not going to see much of that. Um, but nonetheless, that to me is a telltale sign of how much control over the process the manufacturer has. I will hand it to them that they at least have a complimentary finish, that they finished the product. The brushing just doesn't go through there. I have instances of hinges of other manufacturers where it's really not even finished. Um, anyway, it's a very nice operating hinge. So the FBB179 means a number of things. In no particular order, this hinge is made of steel. This hinge is a full mortise hinge. You can see from the swag on the hinge leaf here and here that when the leaves are brought parallel, they're meant to be mortised flush to the edge of the door and frame. It's a full mortise hinge. It means that it's a five knuckle hinge and that it is ball bearing. There are two bearing packets on a five knuckle hinge that is standard weight and the FBB 179 would be classified as standard weight and when it's a three and a half inch tall hinge, the thickness of that leaf would be 123 thousandths thick. And my caliper tells me 0.12. So a very, very small deviation is typical on hinges. That measures 0.12. Okay. Um, can't think of it meaning anything else. Uh, this It will also mean, though, it's a template pattern for a 3.5 inch hinge. These holes will be in a standardized location. Okay. Three and a half inch. Now let's let's move to the size. It's three and a half by three and a half. That means that the hinge is three and a half inch tall, and then three and a half inches wide. The height is the first dimension on a hinge, on, on hinges like this. That's always important to know. Um, it's important to know when you're dealing with a hinge that's not square like this one. If you're dealing with a four by three and a half, Stanley makes those. A lot of people buy those. If you're dealing with a hinge that is four and a half by six or maybe eight by six. You need to know which dimension is the height. So hinges run opposite of how doors are sized. Uh, doors are sized by the width first. And I think the dimension that goes first is probably the paramount of the two dimensions that are in play. It is more important to know the height of the hinge first because the width of the hinge ends up being specified based on the application, as does the height. But the height is going to be somewhat um, understood with a direct relationship between the thickness of the door, the size, the width of the door, and um, its other requirements uh, in terms of the frequency of the usage, the height of the door. What the hinge is made of is going to be important to know as well, uh, depending on what you're working on. You might be working on a fire rated door, but the because the height is so related to compatibility of the application, the width of the door, the weight of the door, and how much volume of use 
you expect it to get. The height's going to be, in my opinion, more important than the width. But the width has to be defined. It's not to be assumed it's 3.5 by 3.5 or 4.5 by 4.5. In many instances, a 4.5 by 4.5 is not the right hinge to use at all. So uh, just be mindful the height is the first dimension. Now this is going to include fasteners, all machine and all wood screws. Let's not, uh, please don't take it for granted that you'll get six of each uh, for every hinge for every order. Even though it's fairly common, you should definitely specify exactly what composition of screws that you want. How many, you know, uh, how many of the openings are you doing with wood by wood or wood by metal or metal by wood or metal by metal? Um, it, it needs to be defined such as all wood screws, all machine screws, half wood screws, half machine screws. Uh, the factory needs to know that because what will end up happening is, you know, um, this could very easily be a steel frame and a wood door, very easily. So you're going to be in good shape. This is also very easily a wood door and a wood frame. Um, you don't want to show up to the job and then find out, well, they sent me all machine screws, but only half wood screws. That's no good. Um, so specify that. It would be best practice to absolutely specify uh, what you are expecting. There is a link below this video to the template, and let's switch to that document on the screen view so we can look at it together. Now, this is the item that we're looking at here and the extended description information which we've gone over. Now, the link to the template is a handy document to be able to see because it will give you uh, the dimensional answers to likely what you're wondering. And the question that we get is, what's the length of the leaf, the F length, from the, the F length from the edge of the leaf to where the swag line starts, F. And that answer is here. So for all of your three and a half inch height hinges, it will of course change as the width changes. And this template is appropriate for all of these different part numbers. And we're dealing with a steel based hinge. And here it is, 123 thousandths thick. The outside diameter of the barrel uh, of the hinge is also a common question. That's also listed. So the E, the F dimension, along with the exact location of where the holes are located from the top and bottom of the leaf and from the edge to the center line. Uh, very good information if you're unsure of what you're dealing with uh, in terms of that size. There it is. Okay. size of the screws are also indicated here. ANSI standard A156.7. So why is that important? Well, it's important because any hinge that complies with that ANSI standard is going to give you the same dimensional properties. So you are no longer tied to a specific manufacturer. Once upon a time, you very likely would have been tied to a specific manufacturer for either design or compatibility or certainly dimensional properties of a hinge and most definitely finish. If you were looking for a particular finish uh, from a manufacturer's catalog from 1920, you could count on not getting that compatible finish from another manufacturer because they were all using, uh, you know, formulations to derive finishes on their finished hardware that would have been specific to the manufacturer. And that wasn't really what was in the best interest of the um, end user because you might want a polished bronze type finish or you know some finish that you could buy the hinges from company A and the door locks from company B um, and that would be an example of why standardization such as location of the holes in the hinge leaf would have been beneficial to the end user so this template is very handy uh, for your use there now let's dig up another supporting document and that would be the cut sheet so there's also a link below this video to a document called Cut Sheet, and that will allow you to review the particulars about this hinge in an overall sense. Uh, once you know it's a standard weight, five a standard weight ball bearing, five knuckle form, full mortise hinge, uh, you will be able to look at an overview of what the hinge is: steel based, non-ferrous based, brass or bronze, polished stainless, satin 
brushed stainless. An overview. For medium weight doors of average frequency, all hinges have template screw hole pattern. That would be appropriate for wood or hollow metal frames and doors. Equipped with two Stanley permanently lubricated non-detachable ball bearings. That's why you get such smooth action out of the hinge. The pin is non-ferrous when the hinges are stainless steel, here or here. Hole and bottom tip is uh, provided so that you can drive that pin out. Now you wouldn't need to drive the pin out in terms of reversing the hinge. It will work on a left hand or a right hand door. However, if you are like me, you want to separate the leaves when you attach them to the frame and the door and then bring the door to the opening with its leaf attached, get the barrels together and then drop the pin down in order to hang your door. That's why I would drive it out. That's why I do it that way. Reversible flush tip pins and hinges. Uh, sure, of course. Uh, hinges can be furnished with a raised barrel. Um, raised barrel is a hinge that you have you have your standard frame okay you have your hinge a gross exaggeration of what it would actually look like and then of course here's your door okay this dimension from the barrel that's important to know a raised barrel hinge though is going to look like this. Okay. Um, that's, well, what I mean to say is that's your standard hinge. A raised barrel hinge is going to look My knowledge of hardware does exceed my talents as an artist, I hope. Okay. Raised barrel means that the vertical axis of pivoting is now shifted away and it's raised away. Okay. Now, where you would want that sort of application would be you have a frame that may feature a door that is greatly inset for whatever reason. Your door could be down here and you need that raised barrel hinge okay in this sense to get the barrel away from the rabbit of the frame. That could be because you either have a very deep inset, the dimension from the face of the frame to the face of the door, or you have a standard frame, but what they've done is added a jam extension to give you that sort of problem. Okay, So you can see it in both instances. That's a raised barrel hinge in a nutshell. Certainly transfer hinges if you want to pass low voltage wire from a door to a frame. They can do that. A hospital tip is going to be a hinge that would have, here is a standard hinge. Okay, so where they take the, and, and this is of course your barrel here, where they take this portion of the barrel and they grind that away. So your hinge literally is ground away so that the barrel actually looks like this so that nothing can be strapped or hung to the top of the hinge which makes it ligature resistant so nothing can be hooked on here like this can be the, the intention is that whatever is placed on there will slip off that makes that again makes it ligature resistant decorative tips sure acorn steeple um, urn, the most common would be of course a ball tip and there are other tips by modern manufacturers of hinges as well. Security studs, they can do uh, a situation where they will install a large thick piece of round material here and then drill a hole in the opposite leaf so what, that when the door is closed that stud 
projecting into the opposite leaf will prevent you from sliding that hinge across each other even if you have uh, a condition where the pin has been driven out and you will often see security studs and NRP used on the same hinge okay so they'll have have that uh, sizes what can you get in terms of a FBB 179 here are all your sizes that's really nice to know uh, what other sizes are available a four by three and a half that is a manufactured hinge that is available that's nice because it will draw the vertical axis of pivoting back closer to the face of the door to keep that um, to keep that back and away and what what that deals with is when you have a frame here's your barrel if you've got a four and a half by four and a half hinge and you are literally wrapping the wall it would be considered best practice to use a four and a half by four so that you bring that axis a quarter inch closer so moving it you know down here so that it's really over here that's that's a nicer look and the point of the matter is they have that for a four inch tall hinge as well so if you're dealing with an inch and three quarter thick door and you're wrapping the wall or there's no reason to have the vertical axis of pivoting projecting further away from the face of the frame you would indeed use a four and a half by three four and a half by four and a half is the hinge that every manufacturer uses every single time but in mo in, in many instances four and a half by four is a better option now there's a link below this video to the manufacturers page when you get there you can open up the architectural hardware catalog and what's handy about that is in the beginning of that catalog you're going to be presented with an encyclopedic approach to explaining hinges general hinge information okay and if you're new to the hardware industry or you want to learn more about hinges this document and other manufacturers have this information as well we're talking about Stanley right now and they do an exceptional job to teach us about what's the difference between full mortise and full surface how the hinge changes itself half mortise half surface um, swing clear swing clear half surface pivots wide throw hinges are not listed here but they'll get into that as well a usage and information chart how heavy is your door how what's the frequency of use here's the model number that you should look at okay and that's why those sizes are listed there as well this is how you determine this page is how you determine how wide of a hinge you need and that formula is door thickness times two pardon me door thickness minus back set times two plus your clearance plus your inset use the next largest size so if you have an inch and three quarter thick door and here's an example of what I was talking at about earlier if you have an inch and three quarter thick door um, inch and three quarter minus your back set which would be quarter inch inch and a half times two that's three inch okay your inset is an eighth of an inch you have no need for clearance because you are wrapping the wall in this instance use the next largest size so if you were dealing with a four inch tall hinge you would be best off using a three and a half inch because we're going to be cl very close to three inch um, if you were using a four and a half a four inch would be the next closest size three and a half by three would be the right answer for this hinge in this instance I don't know if Stanley makes a three and a half by three others do and back to our cut sheet they indeed do so in that instance where you're wrapping the wall and have no need for clearance you're gonna to want to order a three and a half by three that would be the proper hinge to use in this regard okay so back to our general hinge information portion you're going to be able to review okay here's the formula we were on fasteners it's very as I said initially it's very important to 
Uh, indicate what fasteners you want for a hinge. Be mindful. This is what's called a palmel hinge. I call this a two knuckle hinge. I've seen this referred to as a palmel hinge. Um, they might refer to it as olive knuckle, even though it's not olive knuckle. It, it's not referred to as olive knuckle. Palmel. You'll see that name. P a u m e l l e. I believe. You'll see that name come up. Finishes are listed here. It's a great chart. The BHMA chart listing is here as well. So really great information to refer to. This is an anchor hinge. Those are great hinges. You don't ever see those. Uh, I've seen them out in the wild, but people don't people don't order them, even though they are a great way to keep a door and frame from ever sagging. That security, that safety stud, I should say, is detailed here. That little piece that will go in here, as I had said, a shear resistant stud or, or a reverse stud that will go into the hinges, uh, the hinge plates. This also features, this is a detention sort of hinge, very heavy weight, uh, a institutional or hospital tip feature on here as well. Raised barrel is listed and they show the applications where you're going to use it, as I tried to show earlier. Wide throw hinges are derived, uh, detailed, etc. So I would really recommend getting to the manufacturer's page and pulling up that catalog. Other things on that manufacturer's page, you're going to be able to see uh, the full line catalog. Obviously, all the Stanley products that we sell, it will go on. Um, a, a, a link to the manufacturer's website as well. Let's finish up this video on camera. Now, in conclusion, what also will be listed or included in the packaging with Stanley hinges will be cardboard shims. Cardboard shims are nice if you need to take a door and tip it out this way or bring it back in this way or move it this way or move it this way or just move it laterally. Um, you wouldn't be using this hinge on a fire rated door. You might possibly. I'd have to look at the chart in the NFP, in NFPA 80. You could, the inch and three eighths fire rated doors do exist. If this was a very long shot used on a fire rated door, don't use cardboard shims. Use only steel shims. That's what you would be mandated to use on a, um, on a fire rated door. The joke in the fire door inspector class is if you're going to use cardboard shims, use your competitor's business cards. Uh, don't, do not use cardboard shims uh, at all on, on applications like this. Um, I'm partial to Stanley, as I said earlier. I don't do enough Stanley work. I wish that I did more. This is a company that's been in business since the mid-19th century, and they are entangled in a very positive way with many other very uh, um, attractive companies. Dorma, uh, Kaba, Kaba Ilko. I'm not sure the relationship there, uh, but they are quite a conglomeration, multinational, multi-billion dollar company. Uh, as far as I understand. If you have any questions on the Stanley FBB 179 hinge and a four and a half by four and a half and a satin chrome finish or any other uh, Stanley hinge, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.